I'm Marcia Newman. I live at 1813 Tanglewood Drive, Loveland. I've been trying to educate myself on this levy, and I find the unresponsiveness of the Loveland School Board to publicly and on the record answer their constituents' questions has made this very difficult. This refusal is causing ill will in the district at large and pitting neighbors against neighbors. I believe the board can greatly reduce this contention by holding a true public question and answer session where everyone gets to hear the same thing at the same time. Your business is education, and you know that how hearing someone else's question will educate yourself, especially if you didn't think of that question. A true public Q&A would be the best way to educate interested voters to make informed decisions themselves, and that seems to be a big deal. In the meantime, I have some unanswered submitted questions from the 9-12 presentation and some new ones since then. However, these few little questions don't even represent the whole, I mean, I, I'm out of time, I have so many, I can't even touch all the stuff I have. So I respectfully ask the Loveland School Board to publicly answer the following questions by next Monday. One, where can we find the study showing it is not feasible to tear down and rebuild on current school property or to add on and update current school buildings that are slated to be moved to the Grailville campus and what company completed it? Two, when and how will we see your September 9th phase-in resolution change on our auditor's website? Three, just as you were legally allowed to approve the September 9th phase-in resolution under Ohio Code 133.21, thank you, are you also legally allowed to vote to rescind that resolution for any reason? Four, how much money is still in the 1998 bond levy that is for 26 years collected through 2025? At five, at the August board meeting, it was stated the Grailville purchase was not tied to the passage of the November levy, leaving an the impression the money has been set aside. Since then, I found out that it's going to be financed using the 20, uh, 2004 permanent improvement levy. What will be the total cost of the land purchase, principal and interest, when it is paid off? And if the levy doesn't pass, um, and you use this permanent improvements from two zero, uh, 2004, how are you going to keep up with permanent improvements on the, uh, in our current need? Six, at the September 9th meeting, it was stated that $41 million almost would be saved due to a 1% drop in interest rates. Please explain the math of how a three-year phase-in saves taxpayers $41 million. Or is that $41 million part of a hidden cost of the levy, the interest on the bonds? What will be the total cost of the bond levy, principal and interest, and interest in 37 years when the bond is paid off? Seven, who and what company is handling the purchase of the bonds? Eight, why are you marketing this master plan and levy ask as a community plan? When by, when you, by your uh, literature, 800 people were involved in at least one meeting, and many, you said, weren't even within the school district or were students. Uh, if we use that 800 figure and um, compare it to the 20,000 registered voters, which we know all landholders aren't registered voters, that's 4% of the district was your community. And that's being gracious. 800 is gracious because you said they were out of district and they were students. So 4% does not make a community. And then, um, so how in good conscience can you keep saying that? And on the same note, how in good conscience can you say we send invitations to the whole districts? Invitations I generally receive have the invitation front and center. What, when, where, and then any extra verbiage explaining why. At least that is what I receive when people actually want me to attend. No wonder no one remembers seeing an invite as they were hidden deep within the newsletter mailer, not even mentioned in the little table of contents on the front. Um, as if, almost, you didn't want people to come. A little slide of hands with the invitation. So you get a whole new whole letter, newsletter, and guess what? Here it is. And so then, two, will a professional traffic study be completed before the purchase of the Grailville property is completed, including an in-depth analysis of emergency response times, because we are concerned about the safety of our children, and any possible impact to taxpayers if that response times are not currently adequate. 
And if we're not going to do that, why not? Not going to do the study. Ms. Oh. Ms. That's, that's time. You can wrap up if you want to. Okay. Um, I ran out of time to even type. So, but when, why isn't the Loveland City School District on open checkbook like the City of Loveland? It, it's available to school districts too. And why can the taxpayers accept that, expect it to happen? And who was on the steering, steering committee with the board that made these recommendations that I read finally got to read about in here? So that you guys were the one, the steering committee. And so I'd like to know who was on the steering committee and who was on the finance committee. Thank you. And I will type these up because I got a lot of scratch and email them to you. Thanks. Mr. Hall. Now we're cooking with gas. Here we are. <laughs>